this is Antitube. In this video, I'm going to show you how to disassemble and or remove the cam stack in a Singer Model 353 Genie. Now this would be the same for the 354 and also the machines that they called Starlet. Okay, and uh, when you go to do this, let me get this uh, plate out here because I, I have it off but you, you you need to take off the nose and the and the kind of the back cover to expose this stuff here so uh, I, I don't remember if you have to take off the front cover here but anyway uh, when you go to do this you want to put the stitch width which is this one on the left and you want to put it uh, all the way to the left which is straight stitch and this middle lever is the needle position and you want to put it uh, to the left so it's left and left okay and then this is your your pattern selector I like to put it all the way to the right in zigzag but I'm not sure that that you would have to do that so let's get started here um, the first thing that we want to take off is this uh, handle bracket and there's supposed to be four screws on this I have one missing but there there's a, supposed to be a screw here and I think it's a bright metal silver scr screw but um, the other three I, I do have there's one back here that holds the bracket okay so that this would be one, two, there's one back here that holds the bracket. And the fourth one is underneath this uh, tension dial. So turn that tension dial um, all the way left. And you'll see down in there one more of those black screws. Okay. So those are the four screws, if you have them, <laughs> to, uh, to take off to get this handle bracket off. So I'm going to start on the hidden one down there. And uh, there we go. Get that loosened and I'm going to stick my little magnet on it so that I don't drop it now uh, I don't know about this screw that I'm missing but the other three are black and they're all the same size so uh, you won't have to worry about mixing those up I'll take this one on the back left side of the bracket out so so um, at in the description below the video and at the end slide of the video, I'll give you a link to the covers video I made, how to take all these covers off. So if you, if you haven't seen that and you need to know how to get some of those covers off safely without damaging them, you can, you can take a look at that um, video. Let's get this one loosened too. So... Um, The cam stack itself seldom would need to be removed, uh, you know, um, especially the shaft. There's some adjustments you can make on it, but sometimes it is so grossly dirty and greasy down in there that I like uh, to take it off or at least dismantle part of it. So here is this bracket. Let me grab the back cover because if you if you saw that you may remember that under let me get up here where the handle on that cover it's a metal in here and that this um, bracket slides in to slots on here like so. So when you're lifting the metal handle, 
there's a bracket inside that slides into this handle bracket and that is screwed to the body of the machine with those four screws or, and that's what's carrying the whole weight of this so that that's why this is called the handle uh, bracket okay and it's, it's easy to take off which can facilitate you know when you're working in here and, and making adjustments and um, later I'll be doing a video how to oil and grease the machine and you should take that plastic cover off and the handle bracket to be able to do that so here's the little cam stack right here cute little guy the, the cams themselves are plastic they're not like the you know the old uh, 401A or five, uh, Slantomatic or 500 Rocketeer where they're metal. These are cams and, and singers use plastic cams for a long time. Uh, even their top hat pop in and pop out cams are made of this type of plastic and they're really durable really. You seldom see one cracked or broken. I mean it happens but not that often. Okay so um, you, we, we put this in straight stitch and needle position left okay and uh, part of that I got my pointer here part of that I'm going to turn this around you look at the back side here is because this 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 top piece here is like a stop or rest for the uh, needle driving um, arm but under here this second little metal arm under here is called the cam follower okay and when it's engaged in one of the patterns it swings over against the cam and as the camshaft rotates it just follows along that pattern in and out and whatever the pattern is okay uh, let's see if I move that out of yeah can you see this uh, needle bar driving arm engaging now and it's pushing the follower over against the cam stack so that's why you want that over on straight stitch so that this cam is away from the cam stack here cam follower oh there I'm, I can move that with my finger so here's a better picture of it okay and when it, like I said, when it when it comes over, the cam it follows is based on where you put the pattern selector lever, right? It moves this cam follower up and down. Okay. So if we, that's why I put it in zigzag, needle position left, straight stitch, and that cam will drop away. Now there's a couple ways you can do this. You, you can take this screw off and start lifting off the plastic cams to get down underneath here and help clean. Or you can just leave the shaft assembled and remove the whole thing. And if you want to disassemble it, you can do it on your workbench or table or not. You, you know, if you don't want to disassemble it. So that's what I'm going to show you first, is just how to remove the whole cam stack. And ma many uh, Singer machines I've worked on have this. And the, the big thing is, when you're removing it, to keep that cam follower or pattern follower, whatever they called it on the machine, away from the cam stack so that you don't, uh, you know, bend it or damage it while you're pulling it out. On this machine the set screw that holds the cam shaft of the cam stack is down here okay you see there's a little set screw right there now on some of these machines where the cam stack has been towards the front there'll be a set screw like that in the front in this case it's in the back and it's a little guy I was surprised when I saw it how little it was. This is a number 38 bit. 
So I'm going to go in here and we'll back that out pretty good. Matter of fact, maybe I'll take it all the way out just so you see how long it is. Yeah, don't want to. I have a tendency to drop these guys and bounce them off the floor. So it's it's kind of a medium long um, set screw. That's what that looks like. Now, um, with with the with the follower pushed back. This should be able to come right out. But on many machines you would be working on, it's never been out. In all this grease and oil that gets heated up and cooled down, heated up, it's seeped in around that cam shaft and it can be stuck in there pretty good. So if you want to, whoops. Oh, there goes my screwdriver. If you want to spray. PB Blaster or WD-40 or put some oil in there. Uh, you can put it in the little hole of the set screw you just took out. Um, can you see this? Can you see this dark spot down there? That's the end of the cam shaft. And when the when when the sh when the camshaft and stack are insp installed properly, it just barely sticks out past that hole, a tiny tiny bit. So, um, what I did on this one is I just took my little two ounce jeweler's hammer and kind of tapped that sixteenth of an inch that was sticking out, right. And then I took a little offset screwdriver and put it on there and I just started pushing with my thumb and it, it popped it out. Okay. So that's how that's how I got mine out. So now it's pretty loose and we can grasp it. And now the gear on here um mates up with the worm gear or pinion gear on the main horizontal shaft so just just kind of wiggle it and pull it up and it'll come out yeah look at that <laughs> so whoever left the screw off of that hand wheel bracket this is the work that they did you can see they put a, a glob of grease up here where it didn't do any good at all except collect dirt. There's another glob on this side. Man, I hate that stuff. Let me, before we get into that, let me show you what it looks like down in here. Mm -hmm. So there's the worm gear. There's a whole bunch of grease off to the side of it here. And right down there is a plastic gear on the top of the vertical shaft. And this one is in very nice condition. But that can get damaged or cracked. And it is quite a procedure to change that gear. Uh, if you saw my gear change on the other machine that I did, where you could lower that, take that gear off, loosen the set screws, and pull the vertical shaft out the bottom of the machine, the service guide here says you got to pull it out the top. So to do <laughs> to do that, you got to take all this stuff off, plus slide this. Um, arm shaft like half the way out to, to pull the gear up out of the top Whew. so it's doable and there's instructions in the service guide how to do it but wow what a job so I'm I'm hoping uh, I never have to do that you know that's the first thing I did when I went to look at this genie was turn the hand wheel and make sure the hook turned 
because that's what that vertical shaft you know goes down to the pulley and belt that run over to the hook so when I saw that I said okay that that gear is probably okay and this is the first time I got a really good look at that gear down there and uh, it looks good it's greasy and dirty but uh, let's see if I got any more light here come here but it looks uh, it looks good under there yeah I don't think you're gonna see it that well but it's right here and it mates up with meshes up with this gear and this is metal right and this gear I'm pretty sure is plastic so you can see when I lift this out now if I want to get in here and clean all this waxy brown type of grease out of here I can get in here and clean all this stuff up and and clean that lower gear uh, I'm probably going to give Benny a shower and get everything off but then you could put a triflow clear synthetic grease in here and uh, get the get the grease where it's really going to do some good on the gears and then put the cam stack back in but that's that's uh, what it looks like down there so let's get that back out let's get the machine back out here and let's look at this uh, cam stack a little bit more see if I can lower this get down here and look at this a little bit more okay. put this down so it's not black on black there we go so again you see all the all the mucky grease somebody kind of serviced it put put grease up on the up on the top instead of down here on the teeth I always wonder how much they charge people to do this kind of work uh -huh. okay Here's the actual cam shaft, and it's eccentric, and you have to put it back in a certain way, which I'll, I'll show you. But if you want to take one of these apart, I don't know, let's say one of them did crack, or somebody uh, sewed a million miles of thread on the zigzag, and, and this plastic one zigzag cam, pattern cam, got kind of worn out or something. And you can do what I'm going to do right here without taking this out of the machine. But you just go in here to the top retaining screw. Mm, this big screw on the top. And if you take it out, you can take the cams, pattern cams, right off of the stack. Okay. Now, you... Ooh, see how easy that's going to come off now? You need to pay attention how you take these off and, and what order they're stacked up. Because if you put them back in the wrong order, when you set your pattern selector switch, it's not going to line up with that pattern. You think you're going to sew a blind hem and you'll be sewing a, a multi-stitch zigzag. So you can take pictures as you disassemble. Uh, I used to make a little sketch like this. With, here's my shaft and here's the, the gear. And on the bottom was uh, the cam marked number six with zigzag. In the middle was number five with the blind hem. And number two was on the top, like this, multi zigzag. Okay, so however you want to do it, just keep track of them. And they just come off, and they always go on with the pattern picture facing up. Okay, you see they got like a little keyhole. And that fits on a part of the camshaft like that. So there's the number two on the top. Here's the number five 
blind hem in the middle and here's the number six zigzag on the bottom and you there we go starting to come off there okay so you see it has a pattern and it's got a number in a circle and every every cam either these flat cams or the top hat or the other style of top hat the the white ones that came in the seven and eight hundred uh, touch and sew golden things they all had this pattern and a number now on the base of this it is uh, a, a cam that's I just call it a base I don't see any discernible pattern and it screws on to the top of the cam shaft. So um, it's that's there for to to make an adjustment with the pendulum movement, which I'll show you in a different video. But way down inside there is a is a little screw also that that has helped to make an adjustment. And here is a big. Um, like a C clip or E clip that's clipping on here. I've never taken that off. I don't. I don't know if if this two pieces go together, this top and the and the bottom part, and that's what the clip is for. I've never taken it off. I've taken this off before for cleaning and stuff. But um, the nice thing with this is like I can just put it in the uh, ultrasonic cleaner and. I want and get it all cleaned up. It's all mucky with that weird waxy grease. But that is the cam shaft and the cam stack is all these little cams stacked up on top. That's the cam stack. Okay. But th what you're looking at here is like the cam shaft and the, the cam shaft gear. Okay. Now, you can put it back in the machine like this and then assemble all the cams back on it. Or you can assemble it on your bench, put it all back together after you've cleaned it or whatever, and then put the whole unit back in, whatever you'd, you'd care to do. But there's a couple of things when you go to put it back that you need, that you need to know. Now this is eccentric. The, 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 sh the shaft of the cam stack, how it's attached up here to this top pieces, is not uh, perfectly in the center. So, and, and it's not off by much, but it's a little bit. So you've got to see if I can, there. Do you, do you see how it's kind of rolling over? Boy, I really hope you can see that. It's not just turning in a circle. There. I'm going to, what I'm going to call the high side or the long side is over here. Then I'm going to turn it back towards me. Can you see that? It's not just turning in a perfect circle. It's eccentric. So you have what I call low side that has less metal to the screw and you have a high side or long side that has more metal from the screw in the center and that's what makes it eccentric. So when you put it in the machine you've got to have this high side or long side facing to the right when you put it in the hole. Okay, And the way that I remember to do that is 
Remember this little key that sticks out here for when you put the uh, the pattern cams on? Right? I try and line the high side up with that. So when I'm above putting the putting it back in the machine and I see this to the right, I know my high side of my eccentric will be to the right. So with that key facing up, I'm going to stand right over and look down on it and turn this until I get the eccentric long side this way. Okay. Then I'm going to turn it up so I believe that the long side or high side is facing right up at me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I've got this key lined up with the high side. That's my story. <laughs> okay. Then I'm going to put this back. Now, like I said, you can assemble it and put it back in. But I pulled it out whole, so I'm going to assemble it back in place to, to kind of show you. Now, when I said that that has to be to the right, it's when you're facing the front of the machine. Right? Correct? <laughs> Sorry. So, when you're facing the front of the machine, now if I put my little key, if I put my little key to the right, my high side will be to the right, and I'm going to put it right down in that hole, slowly but surely. If you want to oil that up a little bit to make it slide in that hole easier, while you're putting it in, just push straight down. Don't get it in and start twisting it because you can turn that, that eccentric, okay? Wait till it gets down in that hole. And you gotta, now I'm gonna turn it back around that I got it. So this, this, this will be now on my left, the little key. But I wanted to remind you to be, be sure you get that cam follower out of the way so nothing is restricting, boom, there. See how it just fell in place? Okay. Now, very nice, it's perfect. So now, I'm going to put my set screw back in there, and tighten it up good, so that I know my cam shaft is proper. And don't mess this up like I have done in the past. As tempting as it is to put the screw right in that big hole, right there, and it'll fit, don't do it. Put it up here where you took it out. Remember the bottom of the camshaft is here? That dark spot? So put the set screw <laughs> in line with that. Okay? And then I want to be sure that it's all the way down in there. I want to make sure I got it flush to the bottom, put my finger there to hold it, I come here and put in my set screw, and get that in snug, and then use my uh, number 38 bit on my Chapman. Tighten that up nice and snug. I don't want that camshaft wiggling around. Now, <clears throat> you have to be sure, if you do what I just did, you shouldn't have any problem with the gear of the camshaft um, meshing properly with the worm gear on this horizontal shaft. It should be good. Uh, what you want to be sure is that it's not binding. They're not so tight together 
that um, it restricts you know the the turning but you don't want it loose or too much play so see that can, can you see that it's a little a little bit of play there huh it's not it's not bad hmm make sure I got that camp stack all the way down <laughs> Yep, it's sticking out the bottom a little tiny bit like it was before, and I got it tight. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's, uh, I think, I think I'm good. It just got a little tiny movement, but if you, if you have a lot of movement and you got too much play here, uh, this is how you adjust the gear mesh. Uh-huh. So you've got to go back here and loosen that set screw because you're going to be turning that cam shaft closer to the worm gear and the, and the horizontal arm right and then the way that you turn it is down inside remember I told you there's a little screw down inside and you put a long skinny screwdriver on there and you turn it a little bit I'm going to turn it a little bit left see if that tightens it up mm -hmm. I'll turn it a little bit right turn it back to where it was and a little bit left Sounds good. So when you eliminate too much play and you get it where you want, you've got to tighten this up and then check for binding. And binding is just when those two gears are meshed so hard together that it's hard for them to have normal movement. Okay? And and don't just uh, get over here a little bit. Am I zoomed out? Yeah. Um, don't just uh, let's first. Let's check the man. It's just barely a little bit of play. That's good because that usually means if you got a little bit of play there, that you're not going to be getting binding. But to check binding, don't just turn this. And say, oh yeah, it's good. You've got to pick something. And turn the hand wheel like 18, 16 or 18 full turns or like 30 half turns to do a whole revolution of that camp stack. Because you might have not have binding right there, but you might have binding someplace else. So pick something. I pick the key, that little key that sticks out for the cams. And I just start turning the hand wheel until that does a complete 360. And every turn should feel the same. It should feel easy to turn. And not all of a sudden you get a turn where it goes, oh, oh, it's kind of, oh, that's kind of sticky or hesitating. No. Every turn should be smooth and easy. Okay. Then we did the whole 360. So we're good, right? Now let me turn it around here because I have to put my patterns back in. I have to form my stack now. And I like to do it with this key off to the right. But that's that's not really necessary. You know, you can you can do it any any way that you want. And when you put these on, you have to be sure that that it your cam doesn't get stuck on the cam follower. Right, so you still have it in straight stitch left, needle position left, and again, I like zigzag all the way to the right. Seems to give me the most room. So when I go back and look at my little sketch, you can tell I'm not the artist in the family, right? <laughs> but on the bottom, this was the plate with the screws, which I've got. On the bottom was my number six zigzag. So here is my zigzag 
pattern and across from it on the other side in a circle is the number six. So I'm going to put that on that with the key hole lined up with the key and wiggle it around and get it all the way down. Okay. Then my middle was number five which is this. Yeah. And that's what I call the blind hem. Can you see the blind hem pattern there? Then there's number five in the circle. And you line up the keyhole with the key. So you can't get this wrong. And then your top cam on the 353 is the multi zigzag. Okay, where it does three little zig 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 zag 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 zig zig zig. And you put that on the very top. Now, if you have a 354, this is the 353 because there's three of these patterns. If you have the 354, there's supposed to be another pattern. So I'm assuming there's going to be another cam. And either it replaces the, the, that base one with the screws, or maybe the cam stack is a little bit taller and they put one more cam on the top. You'll notice it when you, when you take it apart, right? And you're going to take pictures or make a sketch or whatever um, as you go. So you'll know which way they go back on. So hang on here while I find my screw that goes up here. Darn it, I thought I put it in with my little with the, the a handle bracket, but screws, I guess not. Okay. Alright, I found it had slid under the end of the machine while I was moving it all around. That's really why I try and put them in, in a cup or a mag bowl, magnetic bowl because that happens to me a lot. Then I knock it off the workbench and onto the floor and away it goes. So now that we've kind of assembled the stack part of the cam stack, uh, when the cam shaft was already in place, we just need to tighten this back up uh, firmly like uh, so. Mm. And we have uh, removed and disassembled and installed and reassembled the cam stack and cam shaft on a Singer Mono 353. Now that was probably a lot easier than you thought, right? I mean, ooh, the cam stack, mm, you know. But really, you can do that, and if, if you have a problem or... Uh, want to take it out to clean all this junk out like I do and and get fresh grease in there and get all the dirty bad smelling stuff out of there you know um, you can see how easy that is to do just just make sure you got your mesh and you have a tiny bit of play no play or a tiny bit you don't want a lot and you don't want it so jammed up here that, oh man, this is really hard to turn, right? Okay. Now let me get the let me get the uh, handle bracket, and we'll finish this up. All right. So with uh, with the machine facing you, uh, you want you put this back on. You know those clips for the handle face the back of course if you if you put it like this you you're gonna find out they don't match up but just to save you a little bit and we'll set it up there and line up those holes don't forget this tension dial has to be all the way to the left so you can see the one in there and I hope that you have all uh, four of the screws and you have the one that goes right there That'll just make yours a little bit stronger than mine. I'm not worried uh, about that. But um, if I ever see somebody selling 
parts. I've noticed the parts, I was looking at parts this past weekend on eBay. Man, there was a guy selling parts for a 401A. And I mean like a screw he was charging $13.98 for. Um, with these machines getting more popular, these uh, eBay sellers have found out they can make a lot of money parting out a machine. But they sure have a lot of it left over after they part. Now some sell kind of like the husk with the main shafts and gears and pulleys and stuff. They like to sell the motor, the tension unit, the uh, bobbin holder, the hand wheel, the stuff they can get off pretty easily. By the way, if these don't want to start back in, you got to kind of wiggle the, the bracket. It's it's very tight clearance the way they they made the hole line up with the hole in the base so don't be surprised if your screw doesn't want to start at first just give it a couple turns backwards if it doesn't want to seat and wiggle that lift or wiggle that bracket a little and you'll get it in there Anyway, I'm lamenting the cost of, of vintage parts. I think about the 25, 30 machines I got in storage. Because I, I, don't, I don't make any money on this channel. But I have had some people donate. Thank you very much. Yeah, I bought another light. I haven't mounted it yet. And I had to buy some more uh, grease. And I need to find and buy the feet new rubber feet for this but uh, thank you for the donations I think we're gonna do it there now I'm hoping that you watched this and enjoyed it and that you thought right away hey I can do that that's no big deal you know that guy Andy's got nothing on me I can I can do that cam stack <laughs> and you're right you're absolutely right so I hope you can come back to my channel, uh, 400 plus videos on my playlist page by model number. And I'll be doing some more videos of Benny here for a while. Come back and visit me. Thanks so much for visiting my channel. And take care.